we would then come up to this particular um, page. So we are going to click on create new project to start To start a new project, we click on create new project. Good. Can we see the new tab that came up just now? Just to be sure everyone can see it. Good, you can all see it. So we would have to click on the part that says Java, not Java FX or any other um, link here, just the one that says Java. And then we click on Next, and then Next again. Then we give it um, a name. So we want to call this first Java program. You can see that it doesn't have any space in between them. We don't want to have spaces. You can use underscores or you can use numbers at the end of your um, project name, but we don't want to have spaces in between them. They all have to be joined together. So once we've done that, we would click on Finish. And yeah, already exists. Yes, I want to override that. Just a minute. So can we all see the IntelliJ screen that is on now? So we can all see that that's good. So for the IntelliJ screen, I will just show us around um, some settings that you can change if you want to. So looking at the settings, we would be able to change. If we want to change back to a light background, we can click on the light theme and click on apply, then the background is obviously changed. And then if you want a darker one, we can click on the dark, click on apply again, and it is changed back. Then there are some settings that we we'll probably not want to touch, but there are some that would be useful later on if you are doing the um, automation testing class. And then we've got the font, the color scheme, the code style, version control, build, execution, and deployment. And this is just um, all the properties or preferences that are available on IntelliJ. So going back to our first slide, we are going to be looking at the first Java programming language that um, is usually taught. So um, can we all see? Can we all see the PowerPoint screen I'm bringing up now? So um, we've got. I'm going to try to enlarge the screen now. So the first um, programming language we are going to do for this Java class is to print out Hello World. So normally, when you are in the IntelliJ um, IDE, you would normally want to have a class definition. 
So our code basically starts, sorry about that. So our code is basically all of this. And I'm going to explain what every single bit means. And then um, majority of them are all essential for um, starting a Java program or um, even programming in general. So the first part that we are going to look at is the class definition, which is this public class, first Java class. So this first Java class is going to be the name of the project that you created right from the start. And then, don't worry, I'm going to do a practical side of this as well. So for this um, side of the class, we are going to be writing the first Java program for um, today's lesson, and we have the first class and um, public class first Java class, and this line of code is basically the class definition, and this line uses the keyword class to find a new class being defined, and the new class that we are defining is this first Java class. It can be any name you give it as far as it's reasonable and readable. And then move on to the main method. And this main method, I'm going to try to explain every bit of um, word within this main method. And for the public, we have the public here so that the Java VM can execute the method from everywhere, this particular public. And the static method can be called without objects. And the void that we have here means that we want this um, program that we are running to return nothing. But if we have a string inside or an integer, that means we want the method to return either a string or an integer. But since we have it as void, we want this method to return nothing. And then we have an argument that is within this, method, this main method, which is the string. And we want the string to be an array. That is why we have these two square brackets. And then we're going to move on to this particular line of code, which is simply going to print out a low world. This system out dot print line is a command that we are going to be using quite a lot within this class to print out either results or sentences that we needed to be printed out by the system. And afterwards, we are going to look at this gray, um, the gray line within the code. We've got them um, year, year, and also year. So this particular one, they are all called comments. And we can have comments in two different styles. We can have the blocked comments, which will simply be like this. So we can decide to have whatever we want to have in here. As far as they are within this two, the forward, the forward slash and the star, and the backward, the star and the backward slash, as far as they are within this particular block, they are not going to be executed by our, our program. They are simply just comments, and they are going to be ignored. And we should always try to put comments within our codes to make them readable and explainable to other people that would probably be reading your code after you. So um, I would always advise to use comments within your codes. And then this one here is also another type of comments, but they are called single line comments. So if you want to make any single line comments, you just need to have two forward, I'm guessing they are forward slashes, and then whatever you want your, whatever you want to comment your programmers. So, and this is another comment which is quite readable. I just want this particular line to print a low wall to the terminal. So that is what we call single line comments, block of comments. These are called the class definitions. And then we've got the main method over here and the action. 
So once we are able to do that, we have been able to successfully write our first Java program. So now we're going to move on to IntelliJ to practicalize all of this that we have done. So can we all see the IntelliJ screen, please, before I move on? Can we all see the screen? I can see someone saying no. Yes. So when we are dealing with um, IntelliJ and to write our first program, we would normally use the SRC, not the ID, dot idea, not the out. We use the SRC. So we are just going to right click on it, right click, new, and then click on Java class. Java class. And what do I want my Java class to be? Java program class. So this is what I want my Java class to be. I'll just take out a class. Java program. That is what I want my class to be named. And I'll click on Enter. And once I click on that, I'm going to have my Java class listed under my SRC. Let's just ignore the first one I have over here. So this is the one we created just now, the Java class. And when we create a Java class, it basically already has a class definition printed out for us already. So now we are going to go on to put a method inside the Java class. And what do we want the method to do? At the end of, um, after writing this method, I actually want the method to print out a low world for me. You can print out whatever you want to print out, your name, your address, whatever information you want to print out. But we are going to first try printing out a low world. Now we go on by starting with public, static. And then you can also see that um, IntelliJ also auto can suggest um, words for you. And then you can just pick whichever one is suitable for whatever you're writing. So I'm just going to click on Enter. Fills out the static for me. Then we go on to say Void. Void means I don't want this program to return um, anything. I just want to print out something. Then we go on to the main. Then our bracket, I want a string as an argument, which should be an array. And the argument name is going to be args, A-R-G-S. Then outside of the bracket, I'm going to put the curly brackets, open and closing. Don't always forget to close, because if this is omitted, if I'm to take out this one, I'm going to be having an error. So, and it's also going to also suggest what is missing. So we have the first open bracket. OK, I'm just going to fill this one in now. So we have the first open bracket, which is this one, covering the Java class, opening and closing. And also for the main, I have my own curly bracket as well, the opening and the closing. And what do I want to be printed inside this curly bracket? I want to print out. Hello world. So I'm going to go with my printing out statement. System. System. Dot. Out. Dot. Print. Line. And double quotes. What do I want to print out? Hello world. And at the end of our com at the end of our um, sentence, we need to always have a semicolon. I'm guessing that is what that's called. So we need to have a semicolon because if it is omitted, we are going to be having errors within our code, and the code is probably not going to run. It's going to come up with some error messages. 
So we need to have a semicolon at the end of the code. And for us to print out this particular um, line of code now, we would always have to go to, we can always right click, right click on your Java program, the Java class you created, you can just right click on it, click run Java program dot main, click on run. And that should display the results within our terminal. Yes, hello world is printed out. So that is how we print out um, whatever you want to print out in Java. So if you want to print out something else, I'm just going to copy this one and paste, paste. What do I want to print out? I want to print out my name. My name is and what else do I want to print out? Um, my um, we can print out addresses or just wherever I want to print out. So I'm just going to say I am Nigerian. So I'm going to try running this line of code again, and we should be expecting three different lines of code to be printed out. So I'm going to click on run. I can click on run here because I, I want to run the Java program and that is my program that I had created. So I'm, I can just click on this run here, click run. You should expect three different lines to be printed out for us now. So I've got hello world. My name is Onying. I am Nigerian. So that is just how we um, executes the first um, Java program in Java and using IntelliJ as well. So that's just how you print out wherever you want to print out in Java using the system.out.print command. And then once we've done that, we can then move on to some um, other um, topics which we can start looking at today or next week. But um, before we move on, I want us to um, try downloading um, Java and also IntelliJ. Downloading Java, configuring your um, Java environment, and also installing IntelliJ on your laptops before next week's class. I, I would also want us to um, try to practicalize by printing out sentences we want to um, execute in Java. And also, let me try to implement the commands as well. So if I want to implement a command, a block of command, I'm going to use the backslash and the star and star and backslash again. Sorry, that's a mistake. And then I'm going to write inside of it. So what do I want to print out? This is my first Java program. I am still learning. So this is how we print out a block of code in Java. And if we want to print out a line of code, we can either print them out on top or at the side. So I'm going to do the two of them. If I'm to print out this one on top, so my line of code here is going to be print hello world. As far as it is meaningful and other people can read your code by reading the com by reading the comments, then that is fine. So this is another a single line of code I've written over here. And then I've also got, um, I can also write a line of code at, at the end of my um, semicolon as well. So in here, I want to say, print out my name. So if I'm to close this command now, the main purpose of the importance of using commands is assuming you are in a place of work and then you're gone away for a week or a month, 
and then um, somebody needs to work on your project, the person can easily open up your um, project and also find them readable by and also meaningful by reading the commands that you put on your code as well. That is why one of the importance of um, Java is that the codes are maintainable, readable, and also easy to learn. And also implementing comments. Sorry, I keep saying commands. So implementing comments within your code is quite useful because it makes them um, readable and understandable to anyone else when they are reading your um, codes. So that is us. Um, done for the first part of our lesson, so I can take up some questions now. If you got, if you got some questions for me, or we can just move on to the next part of um, the course, which is going to be Java, which is going to be um, variables, data types, and operators in Java. But if you've got some questions now, I can take them and. Um, we can then move on to the next part. So um, the first question is, so the first question is, yes, this um, class is, is recorded and will be available on YouTube. Have we got any other questions? Yes, Java is case sensitive. Yes, it is case sensitive. You have to use the capital S system, capital S system dot out. And um, how much Java do you need to know for automation testing? Um, I would say you can know the basics and also, um, and I know for automation testing and for um, the introduction to Java class, we would be looking into methods and object-oriented programming methods and exception handling arrays, which are also being used in um, automation testing as well. So if you stick to this class, I'm sure you find some of what you'll be thought useful for your automation class as well. Um, yes, you can run Java straight on your Mac device. That's what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm not sure you can do that in a virtual environment. I've never done that before. Okay, I'll do a recap on setting up the Java environment before the end of the class. So adding void to your method will re please you said adding void to the method will let you return any anything seems not to get it. Um so what I mean by void is um so void means nothing. On in, in a literal sense, void means nothing. So if you are to now, we adding a void to this particular method means we don't want it to return um, an integer or a string or an array. So basically, when we say void, we mean we don't want to return anything, even though we are printing out something here. But normally, um, void means we don't want it to return anything. I'm sure you would base you understand later on um, as we go on within the class, but just know that when we have void here, it means to return nothing. And I know we are still printing out um, some, um, we are printing out hello world here, but that was the action that we want the method to do, which is to print out hello world. But for the void, we can say, instead of using the void here, we can use a string or an integer, but that is not what we want to do. We want it to return nothing. And then I would be able to explain that later on within the course of the um, classes we'll be having. So I'm just reading through some other questions. Um, is terminal the same as command prompt? Yes. Sorry, terminal is also the same as command prompt. Um, 
you are just joining for the first time, yeah, this is just the first class we are having, and this class is going to be uploaded on YouTube as well, so you can just um, look at the video after the end of the class, or maybe tomorrow, to have um, a better understanding of what was looked into today before next class. How useful is Java for business analysts? I don't think Java has anything to do with business analysis. I'm not entirely sure, but you can um, join the business analysis class, just the introductory part, but I don't think you need Java for that. I have Anaconda. How useful is it for software testing? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I can find out and get back to you. Just try to ask that question again on the Telegram group, and I should be able to get back to you on that. How long could I expect to learn Java and apply for a job? Um, we are doing the introduction to Java, so I would say after this, you can um, equip yourself with um, more um, relevant videos online or um, also some personal reading as well and just try to practice and also you could also pick up some um, freelancing skills to be able to boost your confidence and all of that. Is IntelliJ a set of tools like Selenium? No, IntelliJ is an IDE just like Visual Studio or Eclipse and Seleniums are just plugins. Does it save automatically or you have to, you have to when you are downloading um, Java, you have to click on the save um, button when it comes up or else nothing will be downloaded on your um, laptop. Can you print Java commands straight from the terminal? I'm sure you can. Is Java the only language for testing? No, there is Java, C Sharp, Python, and Ruby. Those are the ones I can remember. But for Blue Sky, we are going to be looking into Java for this particular summer program. But you can also join the um, Java, the software testing, operation testing class. Um, then you'll be given more um, information on how it goes. Or does the Hello World program save automatically? Yes, it does. And then you can also, to double check or to be safe, you can also click on the Save All button to save your um, Java classes along the line. Do you need to obey indentation rules in Java as well, just like we do? Um, most of the time, I normally like my um, commands to be indented as possible because it makes it look appealable and readable. And then I would also show us some techniques on how to um, get them indented all at once so we don't have to be doing it one by one. I'll show you along the line as well and also relevant information that you can also look up to and enhance your knowledge on how to use IntelliJ also, and it is quite helpful for your automation class as well. Can we use Eclipse instead of IntelliJ? Yes, you can use Eclipse for instead of IntelliJ, but for this particular Java class and for the automation as well, we're going to be using IntelliJ, so that's why we are using IntelliJ for the Java. Good. I guess that's all the questions we have, but I'm going to go over the Java configuration again because someone asked, but I'm going to come back to the questions um, if anyone is going to drop any more into it. So let me bring up the slide again. Right. Hmm. So I'm just going to guess this is for, okay, I'll do both of them. So for um, 
Java environment variable setup on Mac, we would first bring up our terminal and then we would enter this particular command echo java underscore home with the dollar sign in front and this basically um, shows us where the java home path is like what the java home path is and if that comes out blank that means we've not got java configured on our mac system so once that is blank we would want to open up the bash profile with the nano and then this sign i don't know what the sign is and then the backslash dot bash underscore profile this is the command we need to bring up the bash profile and once this is brought up we would already have the java home the export java home path already in our bash profile and in most cases the export path here we already have java home as well but in situations where it is not there we would add the dollar sign java home to the front of the um, path and we would still keep whatever is left at the back also and once that is done we would then save this particular bash profile and exit and then we go on to implement the um, changes that we made on through the terminal so to do that we would put we would enter source bash profile and this is to implement it instantly instead of having to restart our terminal or having to restart our laptops and this is for mac by the way this is for mac devices and then after implementing the source after running the source bash profile we would then echo back the java home to see if the path actually exists and has been implemented and when we echo that back we will get a path like this or something similar to this as well depending on where you've installed where java has been installed on your machine and once that is done you would then get the java version that we installed at the initial start using java space dash version and then that is us done for Mac. But for Windows, I know I mentioned um, during the Java installation that we had to keep a file path, a specific file path. So if you kept that, that is good. But if not, you would have to go through your folders, your file explorer to look for where your Java has been installed. And in my own case, it was installed in the C drive program file Java JDK bin. That was where my Java was installed. And when I get that path, I would then go to my control panel within my device and click on advanced system settings. Just click here. And once I've done that, I would then be, be then this particular window is going to come up and click on advanced then environment variable and once i click on that i'm going to get this pop-up box again here and i'm going to go to the system variable not the user variable the system variable and i'm going to click on path and then click on edit and then once i click on that i'm going to given this window again and then I'm going to want to add that um, Java file path into this environment variable I'm going to click on new paste the path at the bottom of the list and click on OK and once I've done that I would have to restart my system to enforce the environment variable change that I've just made so that is just how you configure your um, Java environment variables in Mac and Windows. But if you've got any other difficulty before the end of next class, which is next week, Monday, you can just let me know within the week and I will be able to help you. I'm just going to look through some other questions now. 
Oh no. Okay. Oh. Can we use the same method used in IntelliJ on Eclipse? Yes, we can. We can use the same method used in um, IntelliJ, in Eclipse, in IntelliJ as well. IntelliJ version, please specify the exact version of Java and IntelliJ to download. We can download Java version 8 upwards, whichever one is suitable, and then um, IntelliJ Community 2019, please. Community 2019. How can you, you can reach me directly on the Telegram group. I am there and I'll be able to answer your questions. You can just specify introductory to Java questions and then I'll be able to get back to you as soon as I can. Just introduction to Java as the topic of your question when you're posting it. So I will be able to answer you on there. Yes, you'll be able to access this um, lesson on YouTube. The link will be posted on the Telegram group. Join the group, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be up to date on latest videos that will be posted on there. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, if you are, okay, there are two versions of IntelliJ on that community. So I'm guessing you are using a Windows device. So let's take a look at that. So for Windows, I would recommend you download IntelliJ Community 2019 for Windows EXE or the zip archived, the zip archive ZIP. Those are the ones I know. So you can download those two. I'm guessing the JBR8 is also the same, but you can download the first two since um, those are the ones um, um, everyone is probably used to, EXE and Z. So you can download either one of them. Can you show me how to access the terminal um, on your on your Windows device, it is called Command Prompt. So you can just search and then search with the word Command Prompt and you should be able, then it should pop up. But if you are a Mac device, it is called Terminal. So just search using Terminal and then your um, Terminal or your Command Prompt automatically comes up. So any other questions, please? I will be sharing the link to download the Java JDK and IntelliJ on Telegram. I'll do that as soon as we're done with today's meeting. Um, I've already included the links to read more about Java in the slides. So um, I could also share that within the Telegram group if that's fine after the class as well. Any more questions? Just to have Java installed, the configuration done, and also IntelliJ installed before next week. And I would also encourage us to um, practice um, with the first code that we've got today and also um, look into um, resources online. I'll share them on the Telegram group just to have an advanced understanding of um, what Java is all about, what can be expected during this class. And if you want to do some personal readings as well, I will be sending the links out this night. So um, if you've not got any other questions, I will be ending the class in two minutes. And thank you so much for attending today's classes and hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week Monday.